Welcome, Jay here. This is tomorrowbean.com. we got three <coughs> models we're going to update live here. All real estate models, um, condo development, and where's the other two? Apartment building slash multifamily slash self-storage. Basically any high volume unit real estate model, mainly for acquisitions. And a simple property, rental property ROI calculator. So all three, we're going to check out. The condo development has been very common this year. A lot of new developments happening, uh, new housing. So I've had a lot of work here, a lot of custom work. Um, so I was just looking through different templates that I could add. A sensitivity table too, this is one of them. And what we're going to do is target um, the percentage of total cost financed as one and interest rate as the other. So if you have never done these tables before, it's a little bit tricky. Um, we're going to first target the output we want the table to have, which is going to be the IRR. We're just going to do the LP IRR for the IRR waterfall summary. I think that's the most common thing that most people would have or, or want to see a sensitivity of. So make this a little bit lighter. And then on the top, we'll have the percentage of total cost financed. Give ourselves a little more room. Uh, let's see. Actually, we need to format this a little bit. There we go. Okay, so we can use, let's go over one more. So one, two, three. See, this is with, with tables and dashboards, sometimes it's a little bit difficult. Let's just try and make all these the same size. This will be an update on the base default version that you can buy on the site. So it's updating the primary condo development version. One, two, three, four. Okay, we could do five different possible financing. So this is first a variable up top here. It's gonna be how much of the total cost you're financing. We could start at 20. One, two, three, four. Five, and maybe go up by 20%. Oh, well, you probably wouldn't have 100, maybe uh, 90. So that's our first one. So we want to run this model to see, okay, what's the LP's IRR? If everything else stays the same, but we change the amount of cost that we're financing, essentially your leverage. So that's going to be one part of the, and actually this needs to go up here in the corner. And then going down, We'll have the same thing at different cost finance, which are IRR, but now we want to see at different um, interest rates as well. So let's go here. And maybe interest rates you'd have it at, you know, back in the day in 2021, I'd have a lower interest rate, maybe like three, five, seven, nine, eleven. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, <clears throat> and I'm going to do this live for all three templates. And these are all three templates. The default version that you can download will be what's being updated. And so if you go and buy that on the site, it will have this in it now going forward. All right, so we have our two variables. So let's label this as well. Give it a little clockwise text. And this is interest rates. Now, if your project lasts a long time, the interest rate and potentially reserve will have a, a big effect as your interest rates grow. But this one here going across the top is going to be the most. The percentage of your cost finance will probably have the largest impact on IRR. So let's do that. So we want to go. So to do this, and you could do this for any of these variables, um, you just hit equals here and reference whatever you want to see 
as it changes with these different values. You could even do the investment amount. Um, you could do the total project. Um, net proceeds would probably be a good one. You could do uh, monthly IRR. Actually, scratch that. I'm not going to do this for the LP. I'm going to do this for the project level. That's I think that's actually more valuable. You could also do it for the project's NPV, but I like this one. Annual IRR. Based on the monthly cash flows, we've annualized that. So 119% given these assumptions. So now we just highlight it. Go to data. What if analysis data table. And you could do this. This is why Excel, one reason why Excel is so powerful with this uh, referencing structure and cell references is um, you can set up, and this is good if you have a, a nice assumptions tab. Um, because the table has to be on the same tab as your inputs that you're sensitizing. Um, so this one has a, uh, that's why I like to have a global control that has high level stuff that you want to see tweaked, but without having to change the model six times to see the result, you can just see the final result of a given output metric uh, without having to change the model over and over. So now our rows our rows, this is tricky. Uh, rows, I believe, are going to be what is going across this way, and columns are actually going to be this one here. So rows um, is interest rate, and we'll check this to double check, make sure. And then columns, we want to target this variable here. Let's see if this makes any sense. If not, I'll have to switch them. And I always like to put a little conditional formatting on these, color scale, greener the better. Okay, let's call this a sensitivity table. IRR sensitivity table. Now you can see how it's already, like if I change this, the, the model, like it's running uh, these this calculation that many times. So if I now change an input, see how there's a little slight delay in the calculation like when i hit it enter delay and then it goes <clears throat> now if i clear this watch that will go away that's how much the sensitivity tables that takes a lot of uh, computational power now watch instant no delay as soon as i hit enter it's going so that's why it's kind of hard to add a bunch of these even though you might want to see now look the difference if i have this if i start putting in see there's a little pause there and if you add more it'll get even more pause like and that's going to affect like if I started adding inputs here see there's a little bit of pause that's because it's trying to run all the calculations in the model to get to this value with all these different things here and it's just a lot of a lot of uh, computation so I usually only do one or two in a model. It depends on how complex the model is, too. This is pretty complex um, as far as, like, all the stuff that's happening outside of these variables. So it's going to take a lot of power to do it. So that's why I'm only doing one. So I, you try to think of the most important metric. Now, this is condo developments. So I think I'm, I'm torn between doing an IRR sensitivity or an equity multiple sensitivity. Um, the IRR just takes time into effect, which is more, if your project's gonna take, say, three years, this is probably good, but if it's gonna be a one year or year and a half construction and sell, the equity multiples, multiples probably more important. <clears throat> um, and just trying to think so what's more valuable to a user here uh, and having this video will help you if you watch this video I'm doing you could do this for any variable you wanted to you just re-reference this and then run it again uh, there's a pretty good I mean you've got pretty good changes here so as interest rates now this is odd, interest rates going up, IRR going up, <clears throat> percentage finance going up. Oh, I think I did this backwards because 
as you finance more, this should not be going up. So I think I got my columns in rows. That's the really difficult thing about these is um, if you don't do it ever, like a lot, it's easy to confuse what should be on the columns and rows. <clears throat> All right, so before I did it for rows, I did this. Let's try rows um, as the finest amount and then columns as the interest rate and see if that gives us something that makes sense. Okay, yeah, as the interest rates go up, it should lower the IRR because it's costing you more. And then as you finance more, your, your IRR should be going up with leverage. Um, well, that would be dependent on this interest rate as well. Like if this were lower, that would affect these numbers. Let me just slow. So we want to match. So let's say we had 40% uh, leverage and 7% interest rate. 47, 80.5, 80.48. Okay, so that is correct. Let's try one more. Let's do 90% at 11. So the worst possible, sim oh, well, most leverage, but also highest rate. You're at 446, 446. Okay, so this table is correct now. Um, now, if I were, wanted to switch it to a different variable here, what I would do is just say, okay, reference this. And let me see, did this just update? In, in that case, it'd be pretty nice. Then you just set this cell um, equal to any variable here, and this will give you the updated numbers. Uh, now, equity multiple, you also would want to format it to be like a multiple. Uh, righty, let's see. So let's do, so 9011 is giving us a 1.84. That looks right. Let's change it to uh, 60 and five, giving us a 1.79. Yep, perfect. Okay, so that does work. That's nice. So if you want to change, um, the variable you're referencing. You can just go to your cell here in the top corner and hit equals to any of these calculations here and it will show you what the resulting IRR or sorry, it'll show you what the resulting um, summary or, or number would be for that reference if these variables changed. So you could have this table be IRR it could be equity multiple, it could be the LPs, any any of these numbers, any of these final outputs you could do. Um, we'll keep it to this for now. So I'm going to save this as the main version. And actually, I honestly want to, I want to run the table for one less and see how much faster it gets. Let's see here. Let's try to do it. Uh, all right, so interest rates. So the rows were this, columns were interest rate. Oh, no, that didn't work. Let me see if I can go data model. Sorry, what What if? Yeah. We'll just leave it at that. It's not if, if you don't want this to drag down your speed, you can just highlight it and clear and clear all and just remove it and it will speed up the workbook. But we're gonna put it in here as the base version. Remove this. Okay, so we know this worked. Right. Well let's make sure. Uh so financing costs going up, IR up, interest rates going up, IR going down. Perfect. Okay, so that's that one. Now that model will be available on smarthelping.com under the real estate section here under condo. And I've got a build to sell, build to rent. The build to sell is the one we just did an update on. And I'll make a note uh, down here in the features that there was an update for that. And I will update the build to sell screen. So you can see there's the global control that this is the part that we're updating here. So that's that one done.
the other one, apartment building. So here we have a little bit of a different structure. Uh, this is for developing or acquiring apartment buildings, um, doing some renovations, possibly adjusting the rents, and then seeing what it looks like over possibly a 15 year period. We have the IRR hurdles in here as well, and as well as a preferred return model, simple pref. What I want to do is mainly look at the project level assumptions again. And let's see. So we have, let me see. This one actually has income statement, balance sheet, cash flow statement. And just where, let's see. Did I put in a project IRR? Oh, yeah, right here. Okay, good. So this, oh, let's see, what's actually better to use? I guess this one would be good. Um, yeah, we'll use this. So we want to do annual IRR. Uh, I'm going to do the similar format. Oh, wait, did I? Let me switch over. <laughs> I almost forgot to switch my uh, view over so you guys can see what I'm talking about. Okay. Here's the apartment building. We're going to use the same format. Well, I just have to build it actually from scratch. Let's get in here. So this, again, you could adjust the rent rolls that you see here and get an executive summary. It's got income statement, balance sheet, uh, so the project level IRR is here is what we're going to use. So, and we will do, we'll have to put that on the front page to reference it. So project level IRR. Now this is more likely to last mul many multiple years. So we'll just do the IRR as our main. But now that you know, you could adjust this if you wanted. to any output variable that's on the front page here. So it could be equity multiple with LP or GP or what have you. Here's a project level IRR. All right, and let's see. So we have um, sensitizing the first variable, which is gonna be exit cap rate. Well, this is our number and then exit cap rate. This is how much you sell the building for or self storage unit for or whatever it is, apartment building. We're gonna do a four across. We'll say, so exit cap rate, the higher the rate, the lower the price. The lower the cap rate, the higher the price. So we'll start with a high cap rate and go down. 12, 10, eight, Six. And then going down the other side, we will do the usage of debt. So just yes or no. So essentially levered or unlevered. And we'll just call it, uh, yeah, we got to use yes or no because that's what's in here. Okay, and let's move this over one. Okay, and that. So this is nice to see what happens if you, we'll just keep, this only two, we'll keep this at a regular uh, side. Okay. And you wouldn't really change these, it's just gonna be yes or no, and then we'll call this um, IR sensitivity project level. Okay, and we just highlight again here. Go to data, what if analysis. Now our rows, remember, it's on the top, which is our exit cap rate. And 
than our yes or no. Again, these don't have to be numbers. You could do yes or no, and that's um, it could be that's gonna um, as long as this is a linked in option. <clears throat> All right, we'll put in our formatting. And let's see, let me look at, how did we do the other one? Okay, that was the same, just like this. Let's check it. So make these all the same size. six percent i'll say uh, eight percent and then using leverage it's 11.2 that's correct not using it, it should be 10. so if i go to no here we should see a 10. perfect if you want to purchase that one it'll also be in the real estate section under the first one, general real estate model. And again, it's perfect for, it's mainly for acquisitions, but also you could use it for new development. And you buy it for 125. You get the template I'm working on right now, or you can buy the whole bundle of real estate models for 299 and you get all of these. Okay. Last one. So we have this working. Let's go to the ROI and rental property. Now we are going to do a calculation on the levered IRR. And I want to see what happens if we change the purchase price. So let's say we do 200 and we'll do four in this one. One, two, three, four. And we'll do the down payment, which I believe, wait, did I do, how did I set this up? Cash investment, rather. Okay. We'll do, uh, let's say, 20% down, 40, 60, 100. And then we want to see how the IRR of this whole project, and it goes up to 30 years, I believe, yeah. How does the IRR change based on changing the purchase price as well as the amount of the down payment? Now, some other interesting ones you might want to do here as far as different variables to sensitize. You might want to do one based on exit cap rate and hold period, also on... Um, see here financed amount where's our financing assumptions we have a debt oh on here okay so you would have to bring let's adjust these this format real quick you'd have to bring the assumptions for the debt onto the global control and then you could adjust the interest rate okay so here we go highlight data what if analysis data table Rows, again, are your top one. Purchase price, columns are cash invested. Let's see if this makes sense. <laughs> Oops. Highlight these in the middle, percentage. Okay, what do we have here? Now why, oh, cause it's the same, let's say 200. 225, 250, 300. So plug in a number, 300,000, and down payment of 100%. IRR leverage 18.6, so is that there, 20, yep, that makes sense. Let's say you uh, put half down and purchased it for 250 okay now your IRR should be let's see where are we at uh, 
250, let's say 60% down. So you're 14.7 there. Okay, that seems to be working. So we did the right rows and columns. Let's label this. So this is purchase price. This is down payment. Now we can uh, give this a little angle. Underline. And then this is our IRR sensitivity. For this, let's insert a couple rows down. Okay, that's pretty good. Alrighty, so we'll update the screenshots on that as well. So three models that have gotten sensitivity tables, condos, um, general real estate model, and RI rental property. I might do this occasionally throughout uh, the year, updating different templates with um, some high level analytical features. Now this one with only four, you can see, let's see if we're lagging at all on the input. Uh, a tiny bit. 50, a little bit. But that's okay. If you don't want that lag, you can just highlight it again, hit clear, clear all, and that will remove the table. But I think it's pretty nice to have that. Uh, rather than trying to put in different assumptions and see what it is, you can see all the IRR side by side with these varying um, these variables varying. And so more leverage, higher IR, uh, or more down payment means less leverage, less IR, and then higher purchase price means more upfront cash and lower internal rate of return as you go over and down. So your best option, lowest purchase price and uh, lowest down payment gives the highest return. Alrighty, we'll save those, upload them up to the site today, and feel free to check out everything. Um, I also offer over, well, probably over 200 financial model templates here across a bunch of different industries. Some are full startup models, some are just um, helper tools like a SAS CSO dashboard versus like a function as a service full financial model that gives you startup costs, all the different granular assumptions for revenues, expenses, and, um, you know, corporate overheads, debt, all that stuff. Um, I've done a lot of different industries with different bottom-up assumptions for them. You've also got, uh, this is super valuable. These, even though it's not a huge section, these are used a lot, mainly the IRR hurdles and the preferred return for different joint ventures. Um, some general business valuation tools, LBO. These two LBOs are very interesting, these top two, uh, if you're into acquisitions of businesses with leverage. Um, accounting tools, HR management, all sorts of stuff. You can get everything if you want it for $9.99. Buy it in bulk, everything on the whole site. Or you can buy by category, or you can get individual discounts just on template volume or you could buy all the templates individually um, as you see fit. Alrighty, well, this was fun. Um, I'll see you guys on the next one. And I will take comments, suggestions on any other videos you guys want to see me do or any updates to the models that you think would be good. Let me know. My email is jason at smarthelping.com and I do work for $195 an hour. And I am available. Let me know.